Welcome to Geek Bomb. My name is Maud Garrett. I am boss bomb of Geek Bomb. This is my little Zelda. She's going to be joining us. Is this so we can get a good thumbnail? And is this a blatant uh, way to use my dog for views? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Zell. How you been, baby? So this video is powered. It's been a little while. Uh, we did the season running where it was my friends coming along to chat about what they're playing, watching, reading and doing. This time it's all about, oh my God, Zelda, seriously? Is it that boring? Am I boring you that much? But now it's all about the bomb squad. So we're gonna be sharing what we're playing, watching, reading and doing as well. I've been quite busy. I've been doing a lot. Let's kick it off with playing. So I've been playing probably Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda on the Switch the most in the last few months. Um, I love the Switch, how you can take it on the go. I've been traveling a lot. I've just recently been to Poland and Amsterdam. So having that uh, available to me was amazing, came in handy a lot. Uh, but I also love then putting it on my TV. This is where I game, this is where I play. So blasting it up there and uh, having a go. I think I put about 20, 25 hours in over two days. So I got all the, the great beasts, unlocked it all. Uh, it's now down to Hyrule Castle and uh, there is a part of me that won't enter it because I know what it feels like to finish an epic Zelda game and there is such an, uh, a sense of achievement and loss at once. It's like finishing a really great book. It's like finishing anything that you've invested time into and that you love so much. So I'm not yet ready and willing to finish the game. I'm going to keep exploring. But this is a great game. Uh, I've spoken about it quite a bit. I think it's nearly a 10. The only thing really stopping me from giving this a perfect score is the goddamn voice acting. I have to shop on mute because the whole yeah, ah, da, oh, I don't think anyone's that excited when I'm selling them bananas. Like, that's just unreasonable. So that's what I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I'm not playing any PlayStation at the moment. That is not getting any love from me. Whoops. But I am playing my Xbox and same as always, Overwatch. I am playing this game so much again still. I'm only on level 59, so that doesn't make too much sense to me. But still playing D.Va. I really avoided a lot of the arcade games. I didn't find myself doing that. I was on quick play a lot. Um, and I always played by myself, which now that I have a few friends to play with, sucked that I was playing by myself that whole time because having a headset connect with someone and communicating through any kind of competitive game where you're in a team together makes such a difference. So I've literally been putting time aside in my nights um, throughout the week going, cool, let's game, let's like lock in, this is important, let's train. Uh, but I like the 3v3 because in this one, if you win, then you are no longer able to play any of the characters that won you that match. So it really allows you to think outside uh, the box, especially when my box is one character, uh, and to try out others. So basically, they are my two games that I am playing, but I'm gonna throw it over to the squad, and it's going to be brand new member, Dean. Now, Dean hails from London. He's gonna be our games guy. He's done a lot of stuff in the Halo world initially, and that's how he got his online presence. Uh, he spent a little bit of time in PR, but now he's back over on the content creating side and he's actually coming to us from a game launch uh, event. So Dean, what are you playing? What's up guys, Dean here and I'm one of the newest gaming gurus here on Geek Bomb and I'm going to talk to you about what I've been playing. Injustice 2 came out and I was lucky enough to be able to pick myself up a review copy of the game and let me tell you, I've been playing it non-stop ever since. It is so much fun. It takes place after the events of Injustice 1, so Superman is behind bars and Batman is continuing to uh, watch over the world and protect it with multiple other superheroes and some villains as well who have uh, switched sides. Uh, but a new threat comes into play and this is where Injustice 2 takes place. It plays very similarly to how Injustice 1 played. Uh, it's got the same fighting mechanics, but a few new additions. Now there's this gear customization system where you can customize your heroes to be how you want them to be. And each item has uh, certain perks that work in the game. There was a tournament I lost in the first round because uh, I really didn't know how to play the game. So I sucked. If you want to hear me chat more geeky stuff, be it video game related things or Generally, I talk about a lot of Marvel and DC stuff on my Twitter account as well. Then you can follow me at the Dean Abdu. That's it for me, guys. I'll catch you next time. 
Thanks, Dean. Now it's time to talk about watching. I'm going to talk about a TV show and I'm going to talk about a movie that I've watched. Uh, the TV show, I'm getting into Dark Matter. It's uh, available on Netflix if you want to see season one and two. That's not everywhere in the world, though, because I tried to watch it when I was in London and it turns out uh, it's only, I think, in the US uh, for now. But they've done two series and they've, uh, they're have they launching the third, I think, on June 10 on the Sci-Fi Network over here in the States. So I've just done a massive big catch up and watched the first two seasons. For me, I really like the sci-fi shows where there's a crew on board a ship. So I miss Farscape every single day. I really do believe that was one of the better shows out there. Uh, we only got four seasons of that, if I'm not mistaken. And then Firefly, of course, we only got one and a movie. Um, so I love to see uh, everyone's role. And it's almost like, you know, the the Dungeons and Dragons schematics where, you know, you've got your tank, you've got your rogue, you've got your tech person or your, you know, the hacker or the trap enabler um, and the medic. And I love kind of seeing who everyone is on board. Uh, and then, of course, what their strengths and weaknesses are and why they work together, even though a lot of the time they hate each other. That's what you can expect with Dark Matter. You get a really strong, great female lead character. Uh, I think Malcolm Reynolds, but a badass chick. Uh, so I'm really, really digging that. A lot like Erin Sun, I guess you could say. Um, but she possesses the leadership qualities and she is the leader of the Raza, or Raza, depending on who's saying it. And what I love about Dark Matter is that all the crew members, all six of them, they wake up on board out of stasis and their memories have been wiped. So no one knows what their name is, no one knows anything about themselves and it's up to them to kind of work together to unfold their history. So every single episode kind of peels another layer back on who they are. And I think that that's really fun because it allows a lot in terms of story. You can go anywhere all the time and you can add something else in without it kind of impacting um, the canon and it making sense. So that was, yeah, really, really clever. Dark Matter season three soon, and I'll be doing some content for sci-fi on that, actually. Um, the movie I watched, Wonder Woman, watched it twice, absolutely loved it. The first time was for work, uh, so I could interview the cast and the director. So you can check out Geek Bomb and my own channel, Maud Garrett, to not only see my interview with Gal Gadot and Chris Pine, but also Patty Jenkins. Um, they're a lot of fun. The Chris and Gal interview was very, very loosey-goosey. Gal Gadot, even though she was in immense pain, we were all standing up because she basically like slipped a disc in her back, I believe. And this was day two out of about four days of back-to-back -back press. Good on her, she really is a Wonder Woman. Um, but what I really loved is uh, from Chris Pine, he does compare this movie with a lot of other superhero movies and just explains why this one is so different. Um, and Patty Jenkins' passion is just unrivaled. So check those interviews out too. Uh, I did cry the second time I watched Wonder Woman because I wasn't in work mode. Uh, maybe it was because I was hungover, but the tears just streamed out of my face through the fight scenes, through the emotional parts, through the not so emotional parts. I was just a mess. Ask Alicia Malone. She had to basically leave me be in my seat just for a few minutes because I was doing the <laughs> those ones. Ugh. Maybe it's because I'm a Pisces. Maybe I'm emotional. Maybe I'm just Wonder Woman but the flip side that can't deal with all the hardship. <laughs> Covering watching this week is Ziana. She usually does Watch This Space, which you can see previous episodes on this channel too. Uh, she's gonna talk about the TV show she's watching. Ziana, take it away. Hey guys, it's Ziana, and I'm here to cover the watching part of this segment. So I've been watching The Expanse lately, and if you haven't had a chance to watch it, it's a sci-fi show that I think fans of Battlestar Galactica and things like that are really gonna enjoy. Basically, imagine that the human race is gone out, has colonized Mars, has colonized the outer belt, and how that would affect the dynamics between humans on Earth, humans on Mars, and humans who are born in space. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, it's available on the Australian and New Zealand Netflix right now. I know because I'm still watching it. Guys, if you check it out, do tweet to me and let me know if you think it's any good. My Twitter handle is at Ziana or you can go at Geek Bomb as well. Thanks for watching. So we've done P, we've done W, it's now time for our reading. I've been reading so much since joining Alpha Book Club on the Nerdist slash Geek and Sundry network. It is subscription, so you do have to pay, but you do get a bunch of content, including Critical Role, which is basically a <laughs> the number one show on the network, but we are well watched as well. I do it with Rachel Hine, who is the um, editor-in-chief of Nerdist.com, and also Hector Navarro, who you see on Screen Junkies, uh, DC All Access, Hyper RPG, he's on everything. So we all team up. Uh, we've really found our groove with each other. Um, I love this show. It's one of my favorite things that I do every single week, uh, but it also means I get paid to read books. 
Ha ha! So last book that we did for um, last month was Thrawn, a Star Wars book. Now I read this one off the back of reading or listening to Claudia Gray's uh, Lost Stars, which is Star Wars canon. Much preferred that one. And I didn't know too much about Thrawn because he is a part of the Legends, and so we didn't know if we'd ever see him again, but he's popped up not only in Rebels, but he's also got his own book. He's a fascinating character. I love the psychology behind it all. I just don't get as immersed in Star Wars because a lot of the time when they're talking about the technical jargon or when they're in a uh, combat schematics, I get a little lost, not gonna lie. I need to see it, I need to visualize it. So when the thrusters are at full propulsion on the starboard, I'm just like, <laughs> What happened to like swinging a sword? <laughs> I miss fantasy. Uh, so there, there you go. I, uh, Thrawn was okay. I think there's better books that are canon if you want to go down the Star Wars route. Um, I'm also, uh, for this month, reading The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Now, this is the first time I've read the book. This is my favorite movie in the world. I actually bought this book many, many years ago. I just never read it. I'm an idiot like that. I've got so many books in my pile of shame. There's even some on the shelf behind me hidden away. I've got two more bookcases in the uh, the lounge room. Uh, in this one I discovered only last night that um, William Goldman says that he based The Princess Bride and it was a reimagining and reworking uh, of a book that he grew up with from a foreign author called um, S. Morgenstern and I found out that's all a lie. He made up a fake book's history which didn't exist based around semi-fictional characters which uh, well semi-real characters all were fictional um, and was even talking about stories where he visited the museum in a place that doesn't actually exist so with all of that in mind I felt a little bit cheated but I do feel The Princess Bride knowing the movie as well as I do I'm gonna have fun reading this book no matter what the books that I'm listening to at the moment the series is called Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas uh, I'm absolutely loving this series uh, it keeps evolving every single book and I think I'm on book four out, out of five it follows uh, the adventures of this assassin called Selena well, her name changes a lot, and that is all I'm going to say about her character because she is an assassin. She does take on many identities, but the main one that she's been hiding this whole time is Queen. And with that, she's re-establishing her throne and her court, um, all while also discovering that magic has been dead for 10 years and she does possess some. That's a really, really fun book. It's uh, written, obviously, by a woman, and when you do that, you have really great love um, Plot lines and chemistry between the characters and I'm loving that part uh, so I listened to that in the traffic and when walking Zelda so the squad here that I'm gonna throw to for reading this week is Ryan and if anyone knows anything about Ryan he's basically read um, two books ever I believe um, so when I when we were doing powered a lot of the time every time I was reading he's like haha I've been reading my Twitter timeline and I'm like read a bloody book um, and so when we were doing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for Alpha Book Club. Um, and he was like, okay, fine, I wanna write a book. I'm sorry, maybe I should read some books. I suggested this one because the British humor is on point. And apparently he loved it. So I'm gonna throw it over to Ryan to talk about that. My name's Ryan Faroki, and I'm going to be doing the reading portion of this Powered. I wanted to jump in on this Powered because I have not read a paper like actual book since the original Harry Potter when it came out. I get kind of ADD and when I'm reading, I have to like keep going back and reading the same thing again until it registers. But with the book I read that I'm going to talk about right now, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, I didn't have that problem. I realized that when you find a book that you really like, you're just, you're into it. Hitchhiker's Guide is an amazingly hilarious book. I laughed out loud so many times. Douglas Adams is so funny and I feel like our senses of humor are very similar. This book in particular was really cynical and kind of sarcastic. And it's about a guy named Arthur Dent who is a human on Earth and his house is about to be destroyed by the city because they need to make way for a highway, of course. Coincidentally, Earth is about to be destroyed to make way for a space highway. Now that's hilarious to me. And his friend, Ford Prefect, kind of gave him a heads up that this is about to happen. The book just follows their journey together throughout the galaxy, and um, Ford introduces him to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is where the book gets its name. That's kind of like a wiki futuristic for the time. This was a 70s book, a Wikipedia that had quotes that would help you kind of get through your life in the galaxy and survive the things that happen there. They meet a lot of people along the way that kind of help them with their journey. You just have to read it. It's a great book and I'm excited to read the rest of the series. Contact me on Twitter if you want to talk about it. My Twitter handle is at Ryan Faroki. 
That's R-Y-A-N-F-A-R-R-O-K-I. Thanks so much, Ryan. And D, doing the D in Powered by Geek Bomb. What have you been up to? What are you doing? For me, I mentioned I went to Poland and that was so I could host uh, a Gwent gaming tournament for CD Projekt Red, which was absolutely phenomenal. I was learning so much about the game, even though I've played it a lot. This is so intricate and the way that professional gamers see cards is in a whole new way to what I was even capable of doing. So that was really, really fun. And then decided to stop by Amsterdam to catch up with Alicia before she headed off to Cannes Film Festival. So uh, that was awesome. But Julia has been doing something a bit hobbity. Julia. Hey guys, this is Julia and I'm going to be talking about what I have been doing lately. I am a bridesmaid for a very good friend of mine and for bridesmaids, we were supposed to help out with the decorations for the engagement party. So I made these little Hobbit homes are these little, I guess, fantasy halfling houses, garden houses. Her theme for the wedding is Lord of the Rings, so I figured that it fit. They both said you should sell these, so I guess I'm trying it out. They're actually over on my site right now, smiletodayco.com, and I guess every once in a while, I'll, whenever I have time, I will just put up 10 little garden homes to see if anyone wants them. Yes, I gave each of them little halfling names because I, I kind of wanted to like personalize them. Plus because I think they look like little broccoli babies. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys want to keep talking about things or just talk about broccoli babies, I suppose, be sure to catch me over on Twitter at Kularmashik and that's pretty much it. They are super, super cute. And of course, I'll put the link down below if you want to purchase any of those as well. Uh, she's got an amazing eye for detail and they're so cute as well. Hey, speaking of things that we create over at Geek Bomb, check out this one. It's a trap. Duh. It's basically Admiral Akbar as a Velociraptor, which is one of our newer designs that you can get on Pundaware.net. Or if you do want to sign up to Patreon, yes, Geek Bombs go to Patreon because I'm bringing D&D back, hopefully very soon, hopefully after all this bloody travel. We can get that show on the road, which will be really, really exciting. Um, but to, obviously to make a show, we need money. So I put the word out there. If you've got a couple of bucks that you want to cough up, uh, please join up to our Patreon. You actually get exclusive information about D&D. I've done a bunch of posts there already helping me name the show um asking you know who you would love to guest on the show maybe plot lines or characters or, or some elements of the campaign i'm going to turn to the people of patreon to help me basically run the campaign for this and you get to choose character names maybe we'll name a character after you get involved with patreon and of course if you are our top tier which is 50 dollars a month and there's a bunch of you which i will do your shout out video for as well and i'm going to shout out down in the comments below so make yourself known to our cool top tiers and i call you guys bomber backers my bbs you my bbs um you actually get a pundaware t-shirt when you do sign up for that tier. So we send out a free shirt, which is kind of cool. Uh, Pundaware is constantly evolving and expanding, so there's a lot of fun to choose from there as well. Uh, and we have sales all the time. We can pick up shirts for as little as $14. So working on a bunch with Geek Bomb, so excited to have my BBs backing me for all the things that are happening on the channel, including these celebrity interviews that I've been putting up. There's been so many. Uh, Wonder Woman, we've got Despicable Me 3 coming up and some weird flirty, flirty times with Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine. And we all do our Michael Caine impersonations. And frankly, Michael Caine sounds like this. Not my best, not my best. I did it better when I was in front of him because I could hear him. The direct source was there. These are all the great things happening with Geek Bomb. If you did like this video, you know what to do. Um, also, if you want to subscribe, now is the time. We're about to hit 100,000. Anyway, this video has been going on forever. Love you lots, my babies and my bombers. And I'll catch you next time. <gasps> oh, I'm going to pretend I didn't do that. Like, what was it? It's like I hesitated. And it's like, uh, I was going to be like powering down, but that's even worse. I'm just going to.